Hello, this is Jen Robinson, also known as TMS Jen. Today we're talking about Kahoot, which is an awesome online tool for engaging your students or business partners in a gaming situation. You can make your own games or you can use the ones that are already created by others. You sign up for free. We love free stuff. And then once you get that free account, you sign in. Takes you to your home page right here. You can see that there are at this point, millions of cahoots, that number will change all the time, that others have created. I highly recommend you preview those cahoots before you use them with your audience. Here are some of my cahoots, which I made by selecting either a quiz or a discussion or a survey. In my case, I've created mostly quizzes there. I can go down to one of them just to play with it a little bit. This is RICAT, where is that book? I used this one with my students in class to show them where things are in the library and see what they knew. I'll go to preview mode today so you can see the teacher screen as well as the student screen and I'm going to try to attempt to log in as two people on the device itself on the screen this would be a student example of a device and I have one in my other hand that I'll log into as well we've got classic mode because we all have our own devices today and as the teacher I project this on the screen it gets the kids a pin number and they type that in 460810 Student on the screen enters, person on the cell phone enters, and then they type in their nickname. You can have them use their real names or they can use their nickname, but either way it does remind them about digital citizenship and it tells them that if they have a naughty nickname, the teacher will get them out of there. Once the teacher is ready, you start the screen. And there's that quiz. Rycat, where is that book? You can see there are 10 questions in the quiz that I've created today. This is my first question. It shows up on the big screen. The kids only see shapes on their devices, so they either have to pay attention by reading themselves or pay attention by you reading to them. Either way, they're looking for the correct answer that matches the shape. A call number beginning with F mean, which I chose myself. I can set the number of seconds that I want for each question for the students to answer. And I also can see how many people have answered this particular question, so I'll just have a quick answer. We'll see if they're right or if they're wrong. And let's say the other student is running out of time. So that's okay because it still allows me to advance. So on the screen over here it says, oh, the student got this one correct. Wonderful. The other per person did not answer. That's the other cell phone in my hand. And, but it does tell me what the right answer is. So if I want to discuss it, I can show the image and talk about why that was correct or why something was incorrect. And then I can move on to the next question. You can see the rankings after each question. So this is where it gets fun and competitive in your classroom. You can see that student number one is in the lead. Student number two didn't answer, so they didn't get any points for that round. But we go to the next question, and it tells what my ranking is after each question, too, which is kind of fun for us all to see. Question two of ten. I've got my question here, my image that I selected, how many seconds we have left, how many people have answered. If I see someone just sitting there, I can skip if I wish. Let's have this student uh, run at a time so you can see what that looks like. And I'll have the phone answer this time. The fiction section is organized by author's last names. So I'm going to click the blue diamond. So one student answered and this other one just might run out of time. And if they do, that's okay because this is what it looks like on their device. Time is up, but here's the correct answer. Let's talk about it. We can show the image again if we want to. If you had some content in that image or a graph or something. And then I can go to the next question. You can see the rankings now. Student number two, student number one. So now student number one is in second place. I go to that next question and on both devices it will pop up and get ready to go. To find this book on the library shelf, go to and so forth. So you get the idea. In this case, I made a screen capture of part of my screen so I could show them an actual screen uh, from my library catalog, and we could identify that and integrate that directly into our quiz. You can input any image there that you want. You could also put an introductory video at the beginning of the quiz while kids are waiting and signing in and all that if you'd like to, or you can just have that introductory image. So let's have, let's see, to find this book on the shelf, go to F and then SPI. So I'm going to go to this one and the student will answer this one. Well, they both got it correct. And let's see how they did. Now, obviously I could go on with that forever, but instead let's just go to ending the quiz for now so you don't have to see every single option for all 10 questions. But it tells me who the top scorer is. In this case, student number two, which is the cell phone in my hand, how many points they received, how many they got correct, and how many incorrect. 
and then it prompts all of the students who have a device to give some feedback. So the student on this device would say what they thought. Maybe they thought it was a three out of five, but they learned something and they'd recommend it to others. And you know what? They feel pretty good about it, but not great yet. And that's okay. And then the person on the phone answers the questions as well, and you'll see that coming up. So the person on the phone felt a little better. They won. They felt happier. And so they put their feedback on there as well. It says right here how many people have responded to that feedback prompt. And now I see the final results, the rankings for the whole quiz. It will give me the top five after each question and the top five at the end. So student number two was the overall winner. And if I want to play that game again with my new class, I can say that. Or I could go to ghost mode and use the same students without them having to input their names again. That would work well if I had a pre-assessment at the beginning of the class. And maybe I use that post-assessment at the end of the class to see if I was successful in my teaching. So that's just one way to use Kahoot. There are many other ways, but I hope you get in there, have some fun, and play around. Enjoy!